or by stripping the dead in battle. They live like the heroes in the sagas of Brian's childhood, always on the move, taking shelter in caves, eating whatever they can glean by hunting or raiding. Sweeping down on an outpost or luring a garrison into the forest, Brian's ragtag army takes its toll on the Vikings. Battle takes its own toll on Brian. In such a small band, each casualty is a defeat he can't afford. As his scribe records, Great were the hardships Brian endured. Bad food and bad bedding on the wet, noddy roots of his own country. It is said that the foreigners killed many of his followers so that only 15 survived. In the year 964, when Brian's army is on the verge of extinction, his fortunes turn. Emboldened by his lone stand against the Vikings, Brian's brother decides to join him. Not only is the Dalcash tribe behind Brian, young nobles from throughout Munster flock to his side. In the struggle against the Vikings, this band, a few hundred strong, will form the core of his army. They serve not because they have to, but because they wish to. Brian has proven himself a leader. In return, he will reward his followers with the spoils of battle. Brian's warriors are still not as strong as the Vikings of Limerick, but they may be more crafty. One day in 968, Brian sends out a raiding party to bait the foe. Confident in their numbers, the Vikings leave the safety of their fortress in pursuit. On a small rise called Sulkid, the rest of Brian's army lies in wait. What they lack in strength, they will make up for with surprise. The Vikings march deeper into the wood. Suddenly, the Irish spring their trap. In the tangled forest, the Vikings cannot use their favorite tactic, the wall of shields. Fighting alone, no Viking can stand against the long Irish battle axe. By midday, the Vikings flee in disorder, relentlessly pursued by Brian's men. He has avenged his father's death and made himself a warrior to be reckoned with. An even greater prize awaits Brian, the Viking city of Limerick, rich and defenseless. Now it's the turn of the Irish to plunder. The fortress and the good town, they reduced to a cloud of smoke and red fire. 
all the captives were assembled. Everyone fit for war was killed, and everyone else enslaved. On the heels of success, tragedy follows. A rival chief murders Brian's brother. Brian has lost his closest ally. within my breast, unless I avenge this great king. I shall forfeit life for this deed, or I shall perish by a violent death. True to his word, Brian pursues his brother's killers. In a remote monastery, they have taken refuge, and there he takes his revenge. In 976, Brian takes his brother's place. At the Rock of Cashel, he receives the crown of Munster. By now, Brian grasps that Ireland's greatest enemy lies within. So long as the Irish fight one another, the Vikings can never be driven out. Wearing his new crown, Brian nurses a fresh ambition to unite Ireland under his rule. Tribe by tribe, his kingdom grows. Through clever diplomacy and brutal warfare, he extends his power throughout Ireland. Entire kingdoms submit. Connacht, Meath, and his old enemy, Leinster, whose king pays Brian a crippling tribute. In the year 1002, in the hills of Munster, a new summit is scaled. Brian has claimed the ancient title of Ardry, High King. Ireland now has in fact what it once had only in theory, one ruler. For the next decade, Ireland enjoys unfamiliar gifts peace and prosperity. Brian rebuilds the churches and restores plundered treasure. He constructs roads, bridges, and waterways throughout Ireland. To ensure the coast is no longer troubled by Viking raiders, Brian enlarges his navy based on the River Shannon. All the while, former rivals, surrendering but not submitting, bide their time. As Brian enters his eighth decade, old enemies imagine the old man weak. In 1013, the King of Leinster forges a pact with Citric Silkbeard, the Viking King of Dublin, and both provinces rise in rebellion. The rebels have misjudged the old man. Brian spends the winter raising an army. From all over Ireland, loyal subjects answer the High King's call to war. Brian even enlists Viking mercenaries, the finest horsemen in the land. The rebels recruit just as furiously. The Viking Citric Silkbeard sends for help to his brethren across the sea. Earl Sirgard, the Stout of Orkney. Brodar of Man. By the spring of 1014, Dublin Bay is swarming with Viking longships. It is the greatest force ever seen on the Irish seas. 